Welcome back. It's a word that many consider to be taboo, but for some, the N-word has almost become socially acceptable. Tonight, NBC 15's Markley Pollock examines how and why that's happened. The 100 black men of Madison strive to make a difference in the lives of young people throughout our area, with an emphasis on positively impacting young African American males. As a member, I can tell you that means sometimes talking about the tough topics. In this case, the N-word. We went to Verona High School where three of our members shared their experiences with the word with students. It became evident that what was once considered one of the most hateful and vile words in the English language has taken on a much different meaning for today's youth. Tonight we explore the topic and try to find out how this happened. When this took it to Grammy, nobody said It's built careers. And destroyed others. Now it's so common it's casually tossed around on social networking sites. I really do believe that it's okay for me to use the word because of the entertainment nowadays. I just feel like it's okay sometimes. Maybe you don't have that malicious intent. At Verona High School, a small group of students gather for a presentation about the N word its use and popular culture. The speakers, all members of the 100 black men of Madison, come from very different backgrounds. Their goal is not to change opinions, but to inform these young men about the word, its origin, and their experiences with it. I was born in the second institution of slavery, which was called Jim Crow. Joe McLean was born in the South more than 80 years ago. His great-grandmother was a slave. As a young man, he traveled the country looking for work. He says the towns and the people changed but the N-word was always present. And every other word was in this and in that. In, who gave you permission to live in my town? McLean says not everyone used the word, but every time McLean found himself in hot water, odds were the N-word was somehow involved. In my young days, if someone called you that, you fighting. McLean was involved with the NAACP's Youth Council and served as head of the council's commandos, a group charged with keeping the peace during open housing demonstrations in Milwaukee. At the age of 83, I still hate the word. I don't care how you put it. If you, you, or any one of you would call me that, I would get really upset. I didn't know much about it until I came to the U.S. Unlike McLean, Bua Balde didn't grow up with the N-word, originally from West Africa, he didn't learn about the N-word until he started college in the U.S. I think there are white people that say it and they're not. I mean, I have friends that are white that have used it around black people, and it's cool. Like, I mean, we know it's not malicious. Chris Canty is a native Madisonian and UW alum. Once the men are done talking about their experiences, the conversation quickly turns to hip-hop and its role in the word's acceptance. Just show of hands, how many of you guys listen to hip-hop? See, the problem is the kids believe what they see. If it ain't 106, then it's MTV. They want to be Wayne mixed with Jay-Z. Keon Hudson is a local hip-hop performer. His stage name, L-U-V, stands for lyrical, unique, and versatile. They act like the recession is a thing of the past. Hudson doesn't just rap about cliche topics like sex, money, and party. He also talks about the recession, accountability, and the importance of family. He does admit to using the N-word a handful of times on his new album, Dark Past, Bright Future. I'm comfortable with the word. Where I'm from, it's used by blacks, by whites, by Latinos, and we're all brothers out there. Hudson says he doesn't have the same experience with the N-word as someone like McLean. So to him, it's not as offensive. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Four men with four different experiences. They've already made up their minds on the one word in the English language that may carry more weight than any other. The decision on where it goes from here is no longer up to them. It's up to the next generation. I know that I kind of need to stop using that word because I do use it. Yeah, I want to stop using the N-word. You know, it, it, it's hard, but uh, I, th I think I can pull it through and stop using it. The debate about the word and its place in American history was recently reignited by New South Publishing. They plan on removing the N-word, which appears more than 200 times for Mark Twain's adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Some have called the move censorship. Others have called it politically correct. Either way you look at it, the discussion continues. For NBC 15 News, I'm Barkley Pollock. Barkley, thank you. In